Today we're going over valgus and varus and how to remember the difference between these two easily. So to start off with, valgus and varus are just medical terms that are used to describe an excessive angulation of a bone or a joint. Valgus is used when the distal segment of a bone or a joint is angled more laterally than it should be, while varus is used when the distal segment of a bone or joint is angled more medially than it should be. So really, it all comes down to the distal segment and which direction it's angled. So if we were gonna to try to describe this knee, for example, the first step would be to identify the distal segment. So we start at the knee joint and then go distally, so the distal segment would be the distal tibia. From there, we ask ourselves, well, is it angled more medially or more laterally than it should be? So obviously in this case, it's angled more laterally away from the body, so this would be considered a valgus. And actually in medical terms, it would be described as a genu valgum. So if we take a look at a different knee, obviously we do the same steps. So we identify the distal segment, again, the distal tibia. Then we ask ourselves, well, is it more medially or more laterally angled than it should be? So obviously in this case, both these tibias are angled medially. So this would be a varus. And actually in medical terms, it would be described as a genu varum. Okay, so side note here. So you'll often see valgus and varus with a few different endings, and it's basically just how Latin works. So instead of valgus, you might see valgum, you might see valga, and instead of varus, you might see verum or vera. So don't get confused, it's just the Latin just kind of changing the ending, but they mean the same thing. All right, so let's cover how to remember the difference between these two real easy. So for valgus, we know the distal segments are angled more laterally than they should be. So the easiest way to remember that is to think of the L in valgus as standing for lateral. So that kind of connects valgus and lateral together, kind of makes it a little easier to remember. For varus, well, there is no L, so we know it's not going laterally, so we can kind of just infer that for varus, the distal segments are angled medially. Now, I'll be honest with you, there are other mnemonics out there that are a little more fun and a little easier to remember, actually, but the problem is, is they don't work for every part of the body. For example, if you're looking at the angle of inclination of the femur, these other mnemonics just don't work, and you might end up getting confused and kind of missing what you're looking for. So personally, in my experience, the L in valgus for lateral trick is really the best and most accurate way to remember this stuff. And best of all, you can use it throughout the entire body so you won't end up getting confused later down the line. All right, so let's get into a few examples and make sure we got this down. All right, so if we were looking at this elbow, the first step as always would be to find the distal segment. So that would be, in this case, the distal ulna. Next, we have to decide if it's angled more laterally or more medially. So obviously this one is angled more laterally and the L in lateral reminds us of the L in valgus. So we know this is valgus and actually it would be described as a cubitus valgus. For this ankle, if we're gonna describe this ankle, first off, we look at the distal segment as always, which would be the talus or the calcaneus. We then can imagine that these are angled more medially. And we know valgus is lateral. So if it's medial, it must be a varus and this would be described as a hind foot varus. If we're looking at the angle of inclination of the femur, well, the distal segment isn't another bone, it's just the distal end of the femur. So if we're looking at the distal end, is this more lateral or more medial when we're thinking about it? And actually in this case, it's more medial. So this would be a varus and actually be described as a coxa vera. All right, that does it for valgus and varus. I hope it helped you out. Thanks for watching. And of course, good luck on your next test.